you periodically need to replace the chain on your bike, either because the old one is worn out or perhaps because it's been damaged, maybe even snapped. Oh, you f***ing kidding me. But fortunately, it's a simple process. All you need is a new chain and then a chain tool. To remove the old chain, firstly start by putting the gears in the smallest cog at the back and also the smallest chain ring at the front. This gives you the most possible amount of slack in the chain to make removing the old one easier. To create even more slack in the chain, I actually always unship the chain from the chain rings altogether. But if you've got the bike in a work stand like that, you can just pop the back wheel out as well. There are actually potentially two ways to remove the chain from your bike and you need to inspect carefully what you currently have on there in order to find out which one you can do. Now, what you're looking for is a link a little bit like this one. Now, this is called a quick link and technically you can remove the chain without using any tools altogether. You just push the two plates together slightly and then slide them apart. In reality, they're normally quite stiff and so you at least need a pair of pliers but technically you can do it. If there is no quick link, then you're gonna to have to use your chain tool to split the chain, but it's a really simple process. So simply put a link of the chain into the chain tool and then wind the handle of the tool in towards the chain, which drives the chain tool into it and then pushes the pin of the chain out. Now carefully pull the chain off the bike. Now, this isn't destined for the bin quite yet. We need it for one last job, and that is to check the length of the new chain and match it up with this one. Now over to the workbench. Chain length varies from bike to bike because of a load of different factors, but mainly because of the size of the gears. So you always need to reduce the length of a new chain so that it fits your bike correctly. So take your old one, stretch it out, and then lay the new one out next to it. Now you need to mark the length of the new chain next to the old one and then break it using a chain tool. But before you push the pin through, you need to make doubly sure that the two ends of your chain are different. So by that I mean one end is a narrow end like that, and then the other end is a wider end like that, so they actually fit together. Unless, of course, you are going to rejoin your chain using a quick link, in which case both ends of the chain here need to be narrow. So it sounds complicated, but it's not. Both ends need to be different unless you're using a quick link, in which case they need to be the same. If for whatever reason you don't have your old chain to measure the new one against, or you're changing the size of either your cassette at the back here, or your chain rings here, and so you need to adjust the length of the chain anyway to account for a different number of teeth, then you'll find the optimum length with this method. So you take your new chain, Wrap the chain around the biggest sprocket at the back and then the big ring at the front, but bypassing both derailers. Pull it tight and then add two links, and that is your optimum chain length. See that? I'm pulling it tight. And then I've got to add two links. So that's one link, and that's two links. So that link there is my optimum chain length. So now onto joining your chain. If you haven't already, make sure that you shift your gears into their smallest rings. So down here at the back and then down here at the front. And then thread your chain onto the bike. Pay particular attention when it gets to the rear derailleur. So the chain goes around the cassette like that, and then loops back underneath, and then over the top of the first jockey wheel. And then paying particular attention to that pin there. So the chain has to go above that and then around the bottom jockey wheel, like so. On to rejoining the chain now. Shimano chains require a special joining pin like this one. So it's got a guide and then the actual chain link there. So you start by simply pushing the thin end into the closed chain and then take your chain tool and push the actual link into the chain, exposing the guide pin out the other side. Now this can be quite stiff, but that is a good thing. There we go. There we go. Drive it till it's flush, and then remove it like that. It's important to note that once you've used 
a Shimano joining pin, you should never break the chain on that link there. Find one of the many other hundred or so links to choose from, but don't break it there again. And then you then snap that off either using your chain tool or a pair of pliers. If you're using a quick link, then you simply slide the two plates together and then lock them tight by applying pressure to the chain. It really is that simple. Now the only final point to mention is that you buy the correct width chain for the number of gears you've got. So chains are sold according to the amount of sprockets that you've got on your cassette. The greater the number of gears you have, the narrower your chain is going to be. So this is a really narrow 11-speed chain for an 11-speed cassette. The other thing as well, Shimano, SRAM and Campagnolo will all tell you to only use their chains on their gears, the idea being that they're not compatible. But third-party chain manufacturers will tend to make chains that are compatible with all three of them. So, go figure. So all in all then, a pretty simple process. You break the old chain using either a quick link or a chain tool. You then measure the new one against the old one for length or use our special length checking method and reattach the new chain using either quick link again or the special joining pin. Double checking before you do so that it's threaded correctly through the derailleurs. Now, two other mechanical processes that can seem daunting but are in fact simple are replacing your bar tape and re-indexing your gears, so making sure that they work correctly. We've got videos explaining how to do both those things and you can get to them just up there. Before you leave this video though, do make sure you subscribe to GCN because we have a mechanical video out every week and you're sure to need it at some point.